Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Custom Carving and Epoxy UK. I hope you're all doing well. And look at this nice clean workspace. <laughs> Very unusual for me. So, um, if, if you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you're a regular subscriber, thank you for watching and I appreciate everyone's support. Now, I've got myself a new mold, which is not as big as my 24 ounce molds, um, but it's bigger than my standard blooms um, that I've been using. It's probably around about 12 centimeters across, I think. Uh, could be a little bit larger, actually. I've not got my tape measured hand, but I, that's my hand, just to give you a reference point. <laughs> I don't have that big a hand, um, but I would say, for me, it's looking like that's about one, two, three, maybe six inches across in diameter. Um, I know it takes about eight ounces of resin. And I've been thinking about my blooms because if you watch the most recent video with those poor Nassetia blooms, I think that came out absolutely stunning. Um, and I've had quite good success with different blooms and different techniques. So again, if you want to see how I created any of these, go back and watch the previous videos, but really, really stunning effects. Now I wanted to see how I could advance it a little bit. And as you can imagine, I'm the same as you guys on YouTube. I'm watching lots of other creators. So um, I'm watching people like uh, Julie from Pouring Your Heart Out. I'm watching people like Nayaka. Uh, Petra is another lady that I watch on a regular basis. And I'm seeing all of these amazing different blooms. And I'm thinking, how can I do something different? Um, and I really like the canna lily bloom technique that I've seen. And I've not been able to get it right yet. So again, I don't know if that's because I've been doing it wrong or if I've just done it at the wrong time with the wrong products. But I've been thinking to myself, I want to go all out. <laughs> I want to create something special. And if it works, I think this could be my greatest bloom yet. Now, <laughs> again, I'm no artist, as you can probably tell by that drawing. But the plan is, the centre of a mould is typically where you don't get as much movement. So I've drawn this design based around this silicone mould. Now, I don't know if it's going to work or not, but the plan is for the canna lilies, um, I'm going to do a uh, these ovals, basically these oval shapes going around. And hopefully if I can pipe it reasonably well, they'll stay in that sort of position. Then I'm going to have an orangey gold center to those uh, canna lilies, which is going to be these circles here. And then on the outskirts, I want blue petals. Um, so if I do this in the right layer, I'm hoping it's going to work, but I don't know, to be honest. And I'm thinking I might be better off doing this as two separate layers. So I'm going to judge that as we go, because I'm mixing up six ounces of resin. I know the whole that the mold will take eight. So that gives me a little bit of leeway, I think. Um, and by the time I've got my colors in my pots and my piping bags, I'm probably going to only put about four ounces in for that first layer, which will leave me with four ounces. So I may do this in two separate layers. I'm going to see how confident I am um, at the point of piping these. And if these have come out well, I think I might leave it. Because again, the risk is if I'm then piping a petal over the top of them, it could ruin that design if it goes well. Now, if it doesn't, then I'm going to go all in and just try it all in one go <laughs> uh, and see what we come out with. So before we go any further, um, just to show you the, the colors I'm planning on using. So I've got papaya and gold, uh, which I'm going to blend together and mix together as one color, which are micas. Um, I've got this iridescent blue powder, which I'm just going to be adding to my white bloom. And then I've got a metallic blue paste that I'm going to be using. So that is my, my three separate colors. I've got three piping bags ready in these silicone pots to the side. So they're ready. I'm just going to go mix up, as I say, six ounces of resin. Um, I'm going to be using the T-Expert one-to-one, um, put it in my bubble remover machine, and I'll see you when I get back. And let's see if we can make this happen. <laughs> Um, I'm not overly confident because as I say, I'm not the best piper. That's what concerns me a little bit. And I'm going to have to be pretty detailed in order to get this design in. Um, but we will see how it goes, guys. So I'll see you in a couple of minutes once the resin's mixed, once it's up to temperature. I'm aiming to get it up to about 36 degrees for this project, um, just because I think some of them are going to be a bit heavier and I just want that little bit of leeway in the resin. So I'm aiming for anywhere between 35 and 36 degrees I want the temperature to get up to. So I'll see you guys in a second. 
So we are back guys, I'm gloved up, ready to go. Always remember that PPE guys when you're uh, working with resin. As I say, I've got six ounces of resin there, crystal clear, and I've had a few people ask me um, about how to get bubbles out of their resin. And I use a, uh, a debubbling machine from resiners called the Earless Pro. I'll put a link in the description as well, but Ever since I've started using it, I've had a lot less problems with bubbles. Look at that, crystal clear. Um, and um, there is a discount code which you can use to get yourself some money off, which is CCUK. So just checking what temperature we're at. 32.2. Gives me a couple of minutes, hopefully just to get ready with my colours. <laughs> and this is always the, the interesting part because this is what makes or breaks your bloom in my mind. It's how heavy you mix those colours um, and whether or not you're going to get the dreaded B word, which I'm going to try and not say in this tutorial because every time I say it, I tend to get it. Um, and uh, I can spell it, so B-L-O-B. -B. <laughs> there you go, but I'm not saying it. Um, so, this is the metallic blue paste, and I got this off Timu, and it's one of my favourite colours at the minute. It just gives such a shimmer, and I've used it in some of my ocean um, waves as well, and that came out stunning. So, it is quite thick though as a paste, and it's really, really concentrated. So, literally, wipe off whatever you can off that stick, because you don't want it too concentrated. Um, and I'm only going to probably be doing around about half an ounce of resin in these cups. Um, so again, just think about that when you're adding your micas, when you're adding your pigments, the heavier you make it, the more likely it is you are to get that dreaded B word. Um, so there we go. I did it again without saying it. <laughs> Um, this is just some iridescent blue nail powder, which I've had some really good effects with it just by adding it to my white bloom paste. Um, so I'm going to add a tiny bit. Again, not too much, but I think it just adds an extra element of shimmer to your, to your petals. So again, tiniest of bits. Probably shouldn't be doing this over my mould as well. And again, that much should be perfect. And again, this is a brand new mold for me, guys. So I don't know how it's gonna bloom. I don't know how it's gonna work because every mold you use is slightly different in the way it blooms. I have found that through doing um, lots of different bloom experiments. Every single mold blooms in a slightly different way. Now I'm hoping with this just being a standard circle, it's gonna bloom in the way that I want it to, but there's no guarantees with resin. And then for this, other colour which I'm going to be hopefully putting circles in the centre, I'm going to be using papaya and yellow gold and mixing them together. I love mixing my micas so that you get a unique colour, um, which nobody else has probably ever done before because it is your colour. So again, probably about half a scoop of the papaya because I want that to be the predominant colour. And then to it, I'm just going to add a bit of the gold. And what I've found in the past is that just adds a little bit of a shimmer to the orange. But I want the tiniest bit of this yellow gold, otherwise it will just take over and it will be completely gold. So literally, you've seen how much I put in with the papaya. I want probably a quarter of as much of this yellow gold. There we go. So that's quite flat. You can't see it on camera, but it's hardly as any but I'm just adding the tiniest bit. I'll say hopefully that's gonna give us a really nice color. So that's my three colors pretty much ready. Um, move them out of the way, because I'm trying to do this in a more neat and organized way now, um, because I've had a few comments saying that I've got quite a messy workspace at times. So I have tried to work on it, guys. Um, <laughs> Um, it's one of those things. So I'm going to be using the ocean white pigment again um, and probably just putting one drop in here is all I should need um, when it decides to come out. One drop and a tiny bit of string. There we go. So that is that. And then I have got some white sinker to the side of me. I've been adding it to my blooms. I don't know if it makes a difference or not, but I'm just gonna add a few drops of that, which is basically white sinker from Let Resin, Let's Resin. And some people have said it helps the bloom spread. Um, I don't know, to be honest with you, because my blooms were spreading okay before I added it, and they seem to still be spreading reasonably well 
without it. I'm just wiping my gloves because whenever I touch that white balloon paste, it's one of those bottles that gets really sticky and I don't want everything on my surface to be sticky. And now what I'm going to do is just wipe around that mold again because I want to make sure that none of those mica powders have gone in. And as you can see, this is the design that I'm going for. Um, I'm just going to move it around. And again, with my piping skills, I know it's not going to look exactly like this, but it's just an attempt at a design to sort of plan my piece. There we go, we're at 34. So I'm going to wait for one more degree. Um, I don't know why, I've just got a feeling I want to be at 35 uh, for this project. And I always go with my gut. What I would say with resin, go with your gut. Um, and you're not normally wrong. So the plan is I'm going to mix up these colours. I'm going to pour the rest in this mould, let it settle, get rid of the bee bubbles, and then we're going to pipe, well, attempt to pipe this design. So just get my scissors ready. And I learned from the last project, make sure you give your scissors a good wipe because the resin will bond and you will ruin a pair of scissors. <laughs> Um, and then I'm just getting a silicone tool ready. Um, just a standard silicone tool. I've got some of the, a pack of five, I think it was, off of Timu um, with quite small tips. But again, you can use a toothpick, use whatever you've got. Um, so I'm just going to use this one again, just to put any design in that I want once I've piped. But again, it's if the piping goes well. If not, I'm probably going to go creative, forget the design and just try and get some form of petals. <laughs> Um, because you want to make sure that every project is a success, um, even if it doesn't go the way that you planned. So just giving it a check, and if we're at 35, we will be ready to go. Pretty much there now, 34.8. And if you haven't got one of these guys, I got this off Amazon, and it was like, I think 12 quid, uh, 12 pounds in English money. Um, and it gives you a really accurate reading, but what you've got to remember is that's my surface temperature now, 35. The base is only 32. So again, this is what you just need to start maybe thinking about. If your blooms aren't quite working, wait that extra couple of degrees if you need to for it to thicken up a little. But I think I'm ready to go now. Um, I'm gonna just eyeball it. And I, I, I reckon I'm gonna want around about half a cup in each of these. So I'm just gonna pour some in. That is my white. If anything, I want more of the white than the others, I think. That is my blue. And this is my orangey gold. Now, I don't even know if I'm going to need the blue at this point, because if I decide to do it in two layers, I'm not actually going to need that blue. But what I am going to do is I've got a... Um, Plum pot mold, if you saw the last video by the side of me, which is going to be my new drip mold because I've got about 20, 30 succulents around my living room and I want them to have better pots. Um, so these are going to be my new drip molds rather than the dragons going forward. So the rest of this resin now, I'm just going to pour it in. And hopefully that should give me around about a half a centimeter layer of resin once I've scraped it. I want all of it in there because there's no point leaving it in your pot. And it's amazing, if you don't scrape your cups, guys, you end up leaving anywhere between a quarter of an ounce and half an ounce of resin in there if you're doing reasonable sized projects like this. And then just moving it around, making sure it spreads all the way around. And always make sure when you're doing blooms or anything like this that's slightly technical, that your um, surface is reasonably level. Um, I meant to recheck this one yesterday when I cleaned the, the station, but I didn't. So I'm just hoping it stayed reasonably level and that my bloom doesn't shift. And again, just remember with these silicone tools and things like that, just give them a wipe and then you can use them again pretty much straight away. So there we go, that is that. And again, this is my first time doing it, guys. So <laughs> this is, this is, I've got a plan, um, but plans don't always work, as we know. So again, that's just settling now. I'm going to use um, my silicone tool just to go around the edges of the mold, especially with it being a new mold. 
Uh, this is where bubbles like to hide in those edges. And again, just to make sure that I've got a reasonably even coating, which I think I have all the way around that mold. And actually with mixing the colors, there's probably three, maybe four ounces of resin in that mold. And I know it can hold uh, up to eight. So um, lots of space. So that is that. I can't see any gaps. I can't see any bubbles, but just to make sure I can get rid of any surface bubbles, I'm just gonna go over it with my torch, which I have now refilled um, after the issues I was having in the last project. But again, just make sure you torch any of those bubbles off because you don't want bubbles. And that is that. So now to mix the colors up. Papaya and gold first. And especially if you've mixed in your colors the way that I have, make sure you really scrape those sides because what you'll find is that there'll be little pockets of mica just on the base that if you don't really, really scrape, you'll just get little clouds of mica powder in your finished bloom. And that's the last thing any of us want. So that's my orange on gold. And as you can see, it's still mainly orange, but it's just got a slight gold tinge by adding that, that light gold. Next, I'm going to mix up the blue. And again, you saw there was hardly any on that stick after I'd scraped it, but it's all you need for half a pot of resin. And it gives us a really cool metallic shimmer, this blue paste. So I'm thinking that's going to look really good, hopefully, on the outskirts. And I've played around three or four times in my head with what colors to use for this design. Do I actually do the, the centers blue and then have little like stamen dots in there uh, in the orange, which would look more natural, but I don't know. This came into my head where I wanted an orangey gold sort of center to these canna lilies if they work. Um, so that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Go in with my gut feeling. Um, and seeing what happens. And if you can see there, I can still just about see that Galaxy logo through the stick. So it's not fully opaque and that is what I want. So I'm gonna empty this into a piping bag. And again, if you're struggling with blobbing guys, since I've shifted to um, using the piping bags, I have a lot less problems. And I've just used that word that I said I wasn't gonna use in this tutorial. Um, <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't affect things. Um, but that is one thing. Since I've started piping, I've had a lot less problems with it. So it might be worth you trying that if you are still struggling. And that's what this channel is all about. You know, it's about experimenting, about having fun, seeing what works, what doesn't, and hopefully all of us learning together. Um, and that's why it's great to watch other artists as well, which I do, um, and try out some of their ideas. And sometimes they'll come up with great new ideas. Hopefully sometimes I will. And that's how we all grow together as a community. And that's what I love about resin art, is there's such a great community out there, always willing to help each other as well on the Facebook pages and things like that. And if ever you guys have got any questions, feel free to put them in comments and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Um, and do me a favor, as I say, if you haven't already, just do me a favor and like and subscribe to the channel. It's the only way that as a creator, as an artist on YouTube, I know that you guys are actually liking the content. And I'm just really hoping this works because I've got it pictured in my head what I want it to look like. But as we all know with resin, um, what we want it to look like and what it ends up looking like often are two very different things. <laughs> so we will see. So there we go, that is my resin in the bags. And I'm just gonna get them pretty much ready, but still leaving them in the pot. So all you do, once you've got your piping bag, is you just fold it around like that. And again, probably shouldn't be doing this over the mold. And just be careful when you squeeze it down that it doesn't come out the back, um, because it will go everywhere, trust me. I've made that mistake before. So I'm just squeezing it all down to the bottom and giving it a twist and that should be ready to pipe pretty much. But I'm gonna get them all ready to go so that I can just pick them up and go and, and hopefully get this design in that I want. Um, he says hopefully. <laughs> so this is that blue. 
And I think this one's gonna be the heaviest out of the three, just because it's a really heavy pigment paste, uh, which is okay because I think it's, it's the white that I really need to bloom the most in this project. But I want them all to bloom slightly to get the effect I want. So again, just squeezing it all down. And that is already feeling a little bit warm. Now, if you look there, there's like a little air hole between the two. And I tend to go about halfway when I'm piping my white because you want it to be thick enough to actually bloom. Again, I think that's where some people go wrong. They don't put enough white in for it to actually bloom. And that's why they have issues. Some people do it too thin. And again, if you don't put a lot in there, it's not gonna bloom. And what you're looking for is hopefully it will just naturally drip out of the bag. You don't need it too heavy. Um, and that is actually coming out a little bit heavier than I wanted, but I think it's manageable. Um, so before it all spills out, I'm just gonna go for it. And I'm gonna start at the top and try and get a circle. If it's gonna be heavier, I want it heavier at the top and I'm really struggling already guys. So not that hopeful with this. We will find out if I can recover it or not. And it looks like I'm getting heavier in the center actually, which is not what I wanted. Um, but again, I'm gonna persist. And it's probably because I started in the center thinking about it logically. Um, and I shouldn't have done that. I should have started more to the outskirts, but again When you start pouring that's that's it really <laughs> And it's not perfect, but I'm still getting a design in And as long as it doesn't blob hopefully it's still gonna look good and I've just noticed an eyelash in that So I'm gonna have to get that out in a second and I've just gone over it with this one So that's gonna be difficult so that is pretty much my white. Um, I'm gonna try and fix what I can um, with my uh, silicone tool. And I'm just gonna leave this in there for now. And as you can see, this is where it turns into a little bit of chaos. <laughs> um, but anywhere I've got it particularly heavy, I'm gonna just go around like so and try and even it out a little bit. And as I say, if I've got a little bit of a heavier bit, I actually want it at the top rather than at the center, which is where I should have started pouring these rather than at the base, which is where I didn't want it to be particularly heavy. But we learn with every experiment. And again, make sure you're not pressing down when you do this, guys, because if you press down, you're more likely to get that dreaded B word I'm actually quite impressed I haven't said it again yet. Um, so again, just pulling it around, trying to get the, the heaviest amount to the top. And there's the eyelash. There we go. So I've got the eyelash, that's good. And again, a little bit of wispiness. I don't mind. I actually think it makes the petals look more natural. Um, but I don't know guys, I don't know with this one. As I say, I think my piping's let me down again. But we're gonna persist. So that's my white. Next is my blue, which I want smaller because I'm gonna have to try and pipe a circle in there for this to work. So I'm probably gonna go about half the size that I did of the white. And I'm just hoping I've got enough white in there for it to still bloom. And I'm hoping <laughs> as I say, that it still blooms and fixes some of those mistakes I've made. So the, the blue is pretty much ready. Again, I'm gonna go in, try and get a, a nice even amount. And a lot of these resin artists make this look so easy, guys. I promise you it isn't, it is quite difficult. And there we go, I've just touched the resin with my finger. Um, which again is not what I wanted. Trying to get almost a perfect circle with this blue in each one. But 
But as I say guys, anyone that says that this is easy, I promise you, it's not. <laughs> but I was determined, I really love the canna, line des uh, canna lily designs that I've seen some people doing. And I thought, Do you know what, I've got to give it a go. I've got to try and get it right. Whether I do or not is another matter. And again, I'm trying not to do it too thick, but again, I want enough so that hopefully this can spread. And I've just realized I've used the wrong color. So they are now going to be blue centers um, <laughs> um, because I did it slightly wrong. So I'm just folding that up on the, the side as well because I originally wanted them to be orange, but the resin changed my mind clearly. So now I'm gonna go in with the orange, and with the orange, I'm just gonna do a few dots in each center is the plan now. Um, and then hopefully a few dots in this center, and then I'm gonna to have to decide about these outer petals now, um, because that wasn't particularly what I wanted in the design. But designs change, you know, you can still get a great result. So again, just go with it, I think. So I'm just gonna snip off the end of the orange. And this is really bright, so I'm loving the colour. And I'm gonna try and get three dots in each. And just letting it fall out the bag on its own. One. Beautiful. Again, not squeezing at all. Just letting the resin take its time and fall out the bag naturally. And by doing that, hopefully I'm gonna avoid blobs. Let's use the word again. Right, that's my main dots, and now what I'm going to do, just because I want, I, I'm, I'm going to draw in these petals, because I want them all to sort of bloom together. So I'm going to go in with just a thin line of the orange, and then I'm going to try and go back in with a thin line of the blue without touching the white, he says. Okay, now back to the blue. Again, guys, let me know if you're liking this in comments or not. Hopefully you are. Now, as you can see, I've got a slightly bigger hole with this blue. So it's, that's just probably wrecked my piece. Um, <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. I'm going to persist. Okay, so that's that. Now, I do still want to try and get a few of these blue dots in here but it is falling out at a different pace but there we go so that's that and then I'm just going to try and get a tiny dot of the orange in the center of each of those blue circles right so there's that now I do want to pull these out a little bit but I don't want to do it all the way so I'm going to pull it from here just in a little bit like so. And the same on the edge. I want to get a tiny bit of that blue coming through and then all the way to the edge. Um, how did I do that? So here, and stopping at the blue line almost, and then pulling it through like so. And then with these, I'm just gonna I think I'm actually going to pull them inwards and see what that looks like. I'm going to pull them inwards from here, like so, and then pull them outwards from here. I actually really like that. So if nothing else, at least there's something I like about this. <laughs> What I might do, because I've got some spare white, is just put a few, depends how fast it's coming out the bag. Do I risk putting a few dots of white in? No. <laughs> That's coming out far too quickly for me to want to risk that. Um, have I got any in here? I have. So, again, this is all experimenting as it happens. You're seeing it in real time. Um, I've got a little bit of white left in the pot and I think it'll actually come off the silicone tool 
easier than it will, he says. I don't want a lot of this, but I just want to put some smaller little dots just around the edge to reincorporate, I suppose, that white. And you can see my hands are shaking a little bit. <laughs> All part of the fun. Just a few of these tiny little dots is all I'm wanting. I'm not wanting a lot of it. I just want some tiny little dots going in and it should just fall off the tool, but I think it's because it's thickening up a bit now. It doesn't want to. But I think I'm reasonably happy with that. Now it's just a case of praying um, that it works because as I say, it um, didn't come out exactly the way that I planned. Um, but I'm still liking the look of it. So as long as it all blooms and does pull into that center, I still think it'd be a very pretty piece, um, mainly because of the colors. Um, so I'm just gonna torch the top now, get rid of any bubbles that might be in there and then let it do its thing. And again, I've not used alcohol inks in this guy, so I'm safe to use a torch. I'm just hoping it blooms a little bit more, especially in that center, because that's where I'm not liking it at the minute. I think the, the outer edges are blooming well. but the center isn't blooming as much as I'd like. There we go. And that's pretty much that. Um, so I'm gonna leave that four or five hours, come back and see what it looks like. But in the meantime, i say I've got a drip mold by the side of me, so I might as well pour the rest of my resin in. Done. So, as I say, I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll come back in four or five hours, then we'll put a backing on it. I don't know what choice I'm gonna go with for a backing, maybe a green, um, maybe two different ones. So one in the center, maybe a yellow, um, and then a green on the outskirts. I don't know yet, but I'll see you guys four or five hours and we'll see how we're getting on. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and it looks like this is blooming, so I'm really happy about that. Now, I've really been thinking about the back and what I want to do with the back for this piece, because um, it's been about six hours, so it, it should be set enough to do that. Um, I didn't want to go light, because I thought that's going to ruin the petals, but I didn't want to go too dark, so I thought that would ruin the centre. So I'm going to try something different, and I'm going to try light and dark, and I'm going to try and do bit of a crackle effect as well, just because I've been loving how that's working lately, the crackle effect. Um, so I've mixed up four ounces here, um, because I believe the mold is around about half full. And I'm just gonna try and initially just pour a very thin layer around the whole piece. I wanna use maximum half of what I've got here. And I think that should do it. I'm just gonna let it settle for a second. Then I'm gonna pour a little bit into each of these cups. Probably about a third of a cup each. And I've gone with some strange colors, guys. <laughs> it's not like me, is it? Um, but um, as I say, I wanted to get a bit of a combination. I wanted a light center and a darker outer, so it should really enhance those petals, hopefully. So I am gonna go with gold in the center because I'm loving gold at the minute and I've got quite a light gold, which is um, a yellow gold, which is this one here. But then for the dark, I'm gonna go with light brown. Um, and it is a really nice color, which I never thought I would say about a color that was called light brown. Um, <laughs> uh, it reminds me of something else, to be honest. Um, but um, it, when you mix it, it's got a really nice metallic sheen to it, which I didn't expect until I first used it. Um, but yeah, light brown, who would have thought it? Um, it's, it's a really, not gold, but it's like, um, I don't know how to phrase it, it's like a darker copper. 
Um, and I absolutely love the way it looked when I, I trialled it the other day in another piece. So I just thought, you know what? If I can get that in a crackle with gold, <laughs> I'll be very happy. Um, and as I say, I don't know if I can or I can't. Um, I've not tried it before, especially not with these two micas. And I am finding at the minute with lots of experiments that I'm doing with the crackle effect, your micas matter. And what I mean by that is it matters which mic as you use as to what kind of effect you get. Because some are heavier than others, some are lighter than others, and it creates a slightly different effect. So, that has a good covering, I'd say, at least a thin covering of white, which I'm using as my transparent. Not putting any pigment paste in there or anything like that. Now's the time to do it if you want to do that. But I actually quite like the idea of, of leaving this as a transparent layer. Just gonna throw my torch out the window. Um, <laughs> getting rid of those bubbles on the surface. Also just giving it another minute or so just to level itself out. And then I'm gonna mix up my colors. So there's a couple of spots there that just haven't fully covered, but I'm sure there's enough resin in there. So I'm just gonna go over those spots. For whatever reason, you often get the odd little spot that just decides, nope, I'm not playing ball. Resin self levels, but I don't want to. <laughs> um, so there we go. Um, that is that done. And as I said, I don't know, guys, if this is gonna work. But basically, the plan is, I'm gonna pour the yellow gold in the center, I'm gonna pour the light brown around the outer edge, and then I'm gonna do a push with what I've got left of my clear up to the top. It should work, um, but nothing's guaranteed. And even if it doesn't work, you know what? I'm pretty confident with that bloom on the front. It's looking gorgeous from this side, so touch wood. Um, now, I'm deliberately gonna do this slightly to the side because I don't wanna get mica. <laughs> in that bloom now, especially now I've poured the clear. Um, and mica gets absolutely everywhere. I've just actually moved some of my micas around because I've been rearranging my workstation. And you would not believe um, these packets, they just create a cloud of dust <laughs> as you're moving them. So I don't mind this being quite heavy. So this is the amount of gold I'm using. Carefully. <laughs> And I'm gonna try and use an even amount, well, a similar amount of this light brown. And genuinely, guys, it is called light brown. <laughs> um, but it is actually a really, really nice color when you mix it. So hopefully you'll see that in a second. Um, and it's one that I did, I did a bit of an experiment with um, just 3D blooms, mixing two random powders, and this came out the bag. But if you can see there, when it comes out the bag, it doesn't actually look brown. Um, well, it does, but you know what I mean. <laughs> or at least I hope you do anyway. I'm not completely crazy. So I'm gonna do the gold first. And again, it's really important that you mix your powders well. And did you see that cloud that just came out then? Um, just trying to wave it away. Um, just take it slow at first and then really, really scrape your edges, going all the way around. And the main thing I want this for is that center, because I think a gold center behind those drops that I've put in will look amazing. And it looks like, if you look at the mold, it looks like I was right. That center piece didn't come in at all. All the edges did, but the center pretty much stayed still. So hopefully I got it right with my design. We will find out though. And get ready to be shocked. He's mixing the brown. <laughs> Oh, I don't know why I find that so comical, but um, there we go. But it is, it is brown. There's no getting around it, but it's a really, really nice metallic brown. Um, and I absolutely really like it. It's um, one that really surprised me. I never thought I would like a brown colored mica. Um, and it's one that I would never have used and it would have just stayed in the packet had I not have just closed my eyes and picked out two random packets. But look at that. It's almost like a, a, a metallic dark caramel. So there we go. The, the resin's settled now anyway. And this is all gonna be about how I pour. 
I think. And any spare could just go into the um, plant pot mold that I've got on the side. So I'm gonna pour the gold into the center. And I want it all in. I want it all in. Look at that, beautiful. Look at that, perfect, almost a perfect circle. And I can't believe I poured it. <laughs> so, now I'm gonna go around with the brown. And I don't care if it pushes in a little. Main thing I want it to do is come out when I do the push. So I'm just hoping I've mixed up enough resin for this to work. We won't know until I'm done. Just making sure I get the last bit of brown out. <laughs> oh dear. Um, yeah, nothing in comments. There we go. But on that note, guys, if, if you are here and you're liking the content, if you could do me a favour, put something in comments, you know, and like and subscribe to the channel. Makes a huge difference. Let's me know that you're liking what I'm doing. And this, I just want a thin line of the gold going through. So it's mainly that brown. And now with the rest of my resin, I'm just gonna push it out until it's full from as high as I can. I want this to be a decent push. Come on, out you go. All the way. Bit more. And now I'm just hoping it does pull back into that center. <laughs> But there we go. That, hopefully, is going to create some brown, golden goodness. <laughs> we will find out together. Um, but that's pretty much it, guys. Um, but I am starting to like to put a different back on my blooms rather than just a plain colour. Um, might just be a little bit crazy, but I'm just really liking experimenting at the moment. And trying to make things look different from both sides. So if you did, for example, get bored of the bloom one day, turn it round, you've still got artwork on the back. Having mixed success, I would say, at the minute with doing it. Um, because it's almost too much. Sorry, I'm just having real problems with this torch. And I refilled it earlier. So it's not that. There we go. That's better. Let's get rid of them bubbles. And just give it a quick going around. And what I'm hoping is going to happen here is we're going to get kind of a crackle effect where the brown's going to go into the gold. Hopefully the brown's going to stay on the outskirts more and keep it dark. And then the gold will close completely is what I'm hoping for. Whether it happens or not, we won't know until tomorrow. But that's all I'm doing now and leaving it until, um, as I say, until tomorrow, and then demolding. Now I've still got a little tiny drip of resin left in these cups. So what I'm gonna do is just put that into my drip mold at the side. A Little bit of clear won't hurt anyone. But always get rid of those drips out your cups, guys, because otherwise you're just wasting resin and it's so expensive. And there we have it. So I'll be back with you guys uh, tomorrow morning and hopefully we're gonna have a nice bloom to demold. Um, no guarantees though. And in fact, if I have got a drop of this left, I'm just gonna put a drop in that center as well. Just to, I don't know why, but it might encourage the rest of it to come into the center. Almost magnetize itself into the center, hopefully. And there we go. I think it's looking nice. I'm liking the color combo. The gold and the brown seems to be going well together. The question will be now is over the next few hours, whether it all decides to pull in and striate, or whether it just stays in those rings. Um, and to be honest with you, if it does, I'm still pretty happy with that um, because I like the colors. Um, and I think that's the main thing. When you're going for any of these effects, like Dragon Scale, Crackle, whatever it is, just make sure you're happy with the colors. Then if it doesn't do anything and it just stays like that, 
you're still going to be happy, you know, and that's the main thing. You've got to be happy with your piece. And I'm just giving it a gentle sort of go around with the torch, mainly to get the bubbles gone, but also if it just gives it a bit of a boost and preempts any effect that might happen to happen. In fact, I'll put you guys on a time lapse for the next 20 minutes or so, um, and then you'll probably know before I before I edit, really, um, as to whether or not there's any effects. But um, I'm really hoping it's closing in. It's starting to, um, and I hope we get that cool effect. So I'll see you guys in the morning for Demold. Going on to time lapse now. Morning guys, it is the next day and I'm loving the way that this is looking on the back. So it is time to demold and look at that striation with the brown and the gold. Absolutely love that. I might do some coasters just with that because I love that pattern that it's created regardless of what it looks like on the front. Um, and that is just those two micas, some transparent um, resin and let the resin do its magic but I'm really hoping that we've got something nice on the front now. Um, <laughs> um, and this is always that daunting moment for me as to you don't know until you demold. And as I say, some people have said, why don't you turn these into bowls, things like that. I don't actually like the bowls. I actually prefer them flat and I, I just like them as art. You know, I don't think they have to be turned into a functional product. I think with resin, if you do it right, it is art, you know, and it's just something nice to look at, have in your home and see what it looks like. So I'm just demolding. Here we go. So again, that is absolutely stunning. A um, little bit of transparency in the center, but I don't mind that. Um, and just look at those striations. Looks absolutely stunning, but here we go. <laughs> and I am a little bit nervous. Whew, let's see what we've got. Wow. I mean, it's not perfect. And I think what I'd do next time, and actually I kind of lost some of that because of the gold, these, these extra petals. Um, it's, it's not perfect. It hasn't blobbed, which is great. Um, I would have liked a bit more definition in those white ones. So what I'd probably do next time is do these a little bit smaller. Um, but do you know what? It kind of resembles canna lilies. It has bloomed. Um, I love the iridescence in the white and the way it shimmers with that blue as well. Um, but yeah, maybe next time if I do it again, I'm going to do these a little bit smaller, the, the bigger oval, so that I can get more of a definition out. But those bits in the center, I absolutely love. Um, so let me know what you think in comments, guys. Um, and again, I think next time I'd use a different background if I'm using the same colors, because I've kind of lost um, some of the color that would have been in these other petals that I drew in, um, and I really like the shape of them. Um, but I think overall that's a success. I like the piece. It looks like a load of little flowers. Um, and I was right that that center part wouldn't pull in at all. Um, it seems to be that that is is sort of the maximum point. Um, but let me know what you think in comments, guys. Has it been a success, do you think? Um, what would you do differently? Maybe some different colors. Um, let me know in comments and do me a favor. If you found it useful, uh, like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys on the next one.